Lighting plays a crucial role in every 3D scene. It has the power to tell a story and create different moods depending on how you light your scene. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I create a scene with a different mood using the same lighting setup with just a few tweaks here and there. But before we dive in, I want to mention that the scene I made here was inspired by Jalex Rosa and Diego Woods' style of rendering. I've always wanted to try something like this, but for various reasons, it was quite a challenge. It's not perfect, but it turned out better than I expected. So, without further ado, let's get started. First, let me briefly explain how I set up the scene. I'm not an expert in modeling, so instead I searched on Sketchfab for a 3D character that matched my vision. I found a great model by Glenn Fernandez, 66, which I imported into Blender. I rigged the character and added cloth simulation to the clothing. I also used some Quixel Megascans assets to create the environment. After that, I animated the character. Now I'm not an expert animator, so go easy on me, guys. Finally, before setting up the lighting, I switched the render engine to Eevee and adjusted a few settings. If you're curious about my Eevee rendering settings, you can check out my previous tutorial video, and I've included the link in the description. Now let's move on to the lighting. For the first scene, I wanted a daytime look. So I went to the render preview and changed the world color to black. Then I added a sunlight. I set the strength to 5, the angle to 10 degrees for now, and turned on contact shadows. In my previous video, I used HDRI for ambient lighting, but this time, I wanted to try something different. Instead, I duplicated the sunlight to create an ambient light. I rotated it in relation to the main sunlight, turned off the shadows, and set the strength to 3 and the angle to 50 degrees. Remember, it's important not to stick to the same settings throughout the process. Be flexible and make adjustments until you achieve the desired effect. You can always come back later and tweak the settings if needed. Next, let's talk about the background. I imported a sky image as a plane to serve as the scene's backdrop. You can use any sky image or texture you like, or even create your own if you have the time. Personally, I downloaded a sky image from Pexels.com to import it into Blender. You may need to enable the Import Images as Planes add-on. Simply go to Edit, Preferences, select Add-ons, and search for Import Images as Planes to activate it. Then go to File, Import, choose Import Images as Planes, and select your image. Before importing, make sure you turn on the Emit button. Now, scale up the plane, move it to the back, and position it to fit within the camera view. If the object or element is not visible within the camera view, you can adjust the end value in the camera properties. Increase it to a higher number like 10,000 meters, for example. This will extend the range of visibility for the camera, allowing you to see objects that are located further away. You can also rotate it slightly towards the camera to avoid a flat look. Ultimately, it's about choosing the right image that complements your scene. To add more depth to your scene, consider incorporating fog or volumetric effects. Additionally, don't be afraid to experiment with the lighting. Here are a few tips. You can position or rotate your lights based on the image you're aiming for. Observe where the light is coming from in the image and adjust your light's rotation accordingly. When it comes to the light's color, you can either estimate it by visually blending it with your background, or use the eyedropper tool to select a color from the image and make slight adjustments. If you feel that your character appears too dark, like mine did, feel free to add more lights. For instance, I used a spotlight to illuminate the character's face. You can use any type of light, just ensure that it seamlessly integrates with your main light source and doesn't appear too noticeable. The key here is to avoid a flat-looking scene. It's beneficial to incorporate some shadows and darker areas as they contribute to depth and create a more dramatic effect. Oh, and here's a cool trick you can try. If you want to tweak the color of your image, you can do so in the shader editor. Just add a hue saturation node 
and an RGB curves node to the material node, then play around with the values until you achieve the desired look. For the other scene, I follow the same process. I include sunlight as the primary light source, add ambient light, incorporate an image background, and if necessary, add some extra lighting. In this case, I simply experiment with the colors and make adjustments to the settings until I'm satisfied with the outcome. Okay, I want to quickly show you another lighting setup. In this render, I used a basic lighting setup called the three-point light. It consists of a key light, a fill light, and a backlight, sometimes referred to as a rim light. Believe it or not, with just these three lights, you can bring your render to life and create a dramatic effect. If you're interested in a full tutorial on this basic lighting setup, let me know in the comments. Now that you have a good grasp of how to light your scene, I encourage you to try experimenting with different light setups within the same scene. This will give you the opportunity to practice and experiment with different types of lighting, as well as learn how to blend the lights with your background image. Who knows, maybe after this, you'll even be able to light a scene using just one light. And so, with that being said, here are a few renders that I made using the same workflow, the same light setup, a few adjustments, countless sleepless nights, and of course, a lot of coffee. This is how they turned out. Enjoy! Alright, I think that covers the tutorial for now. I apologize for not uploading a new video sooner. My full-time job has kept me quite busy, and I haven't had much time for new renders. However, I promise to upload more regularly in the future. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if you did, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing the video. Thanks a bunch for watching, and goodbye.